Here's my uh, Polaris booster pump that I'm um, trying to replace the bearings on um, to get the uh, motor disassembled. You basically have to take out these uh, four per parameter bolts which uh, look like this. Hopefully your uh, threads on the end can come out. Those actually screw in to the other side of the motor plate here, which would be located on this side. Um, but yeah, what you do is take out those four screws. What I did is I shut off the power anytime you're working on electrical circuits and stuff. And then I tried to take these screws off the plate to, to take the uh, wires off and the screws snapped off. So those little little tiny screws um, throughout this motor are not probably gonna be able to come loose. And so I've gotta find a way of gluing that plate back on once I get the uh, unit repaired. Um, after uh, you take those um, four bolts out, I took off this cover here, which gives you access to this end, which you can put a wrench on. Once you put a wrench on that side and hold it, you can then take this uh, piece right here and spin it counterclockwise. And then once you spin it counterclockwise, it will come off. Um, and basically, uh, this piece is uh, really in here when we're uh, unscrewing it counterclockwise. So once you take that off, you can start taking these other cover pieces off, unbolt the uh, the motor off the stand, and unbolt this off the stand. Um, and uh, let's see what else. This is the front of the motor um, in the far down position here. That's where the second bearing. We'll get that pounded in there, and then this is the uh, the first bearing goes in there, which would be here and over on that point. So that's a lot of items to think about when you're disassembling to try to get down to those bearings. Okay, I'm replacing bearings in a uh, booster pump for a uh, Polaris uh, um, water vacuum. Anyway, um, in order to do parts of this job, um, basically I'll show you some of the things I had to do. Um, originally, the motor is sitting on this little stand here, and this guy is, is bolted on the back. Um, but what I did is uh, I removed, uh, there's two large bolts here and here that... Uh, went on to the, uh, the base unit. Um, when I took this piece off, this uh, I was replacing the seal as well. In order to get that out, I took uh, one of these cone-shaped pieces and I um, put it in the back here. So basically when that sits in there, it's not hitting the plastic surrounding but pushing on just the piece itself and then I hit it with a hammer and when you do that this piece right here will eventually just pop out after you hit it for a little bit it basically comes out and uh, that's going to be replaced um, also jumping over here to the front part of the motor this, these are the uh, the two bolts that I was just talking about that went over here. Um, and then there is another two bolts at the top holding the back side of the motor. And uh, once I took that plate off, um, I was trying to get the, uh, the shaft out of the front panel. And there's a bearing over here that uh, is on there. But in order to get the bearing off and that shaft out, I was trying to 
take this screw drill out this screw that was not turning too well because on the back side of here um, there's a little screw that comes through the bottom and it, it holds the bearing intact so you can't like pound out um, this whole front plate um, off of the bearing so what I did is I got a little multi-vibrator tool in here and I was cutting the um, the uh, this, this bolt there or the screw off a little bit and then I took a screwdriver on the inside and I bent off this little extra piece of metal in here that was holding the bearing in and that allowed me to then take off this whole piece here uh, once I get this inner part of the motor out um, there were some bearings so basically if you put this on here there's a bearing here and there's a bearing on the back side here I don't know if I can put those on easily but I'm gonna be assembling that a little bit later so the second bearing was right there um, in order to get the bearing off this long shaft and this bearing off this little shaft I had these uh, little bearing pullers from um, Harbor Freight and this particular bearing puller um, it just had these shorter pieces of metal on here and that was going into this this arm and what I did is I, I cannibalized another uh, puller maybe like a smaller puller and I took off these little extra extensions and so I made the overall length of this one long enough to fit on this particular longer shaft and then I was able to uh, basically put this bearing puller on like so and pulled off that bearing and then I took this shorter bearing puller put that one on like so and was able to, to get both of those bearings out of there and then I reordered um, some of these uh, 6203 bearings they're just like four bucks or so um, so I uh, actually got two of these I actually popped this little black cover, black plastic cover off and put a little more uh, grease inside it did have some grease in there but I I wanted to really cake it in with uh, more grease so I um, I put that on both bearings and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pound in these bearings on each end of the shaft and then um, there's this little sleeve once you get the bearing in that goes on the front side here and then once I get those bearings back in there then I'm gonna put that back on this cover so this this will go here and basically when you put this bearing into this cover it's so snug it's not going to move around um, so I'm not going to put in um, another little holder piece of metal here and then once I get that done then I'm going to shove this back end section into the shell of the motor and um, at that point I'll screw in there's four long screws that go into these holes here that uh, hold the complete motor together I'm gonna put in some uh, lubricant WD-40 and get those nice and um, new again so the threads can come in and out easily so next time I disassemble it's not gonna be snapping the bolts because once you start snapping the bolts then you get in trouble you can also put WD-40 on these larger bolts which get to the back of the smaller bolts if that is helpful for uh, getting out these tiny small bolts out of the um, the assembled motor um, so that's what I have right here and then I'm gonna do some other aspects of the uh, repair on the second clip
Now we're going to get around to uh, putting these um, bearings on. Uh, so this this bearing right here is uh, 6203. Um, I happened to buy a 6204, which is a little bigger. So when I pounded the uh, the bearing on, I could use this to pound it down. And then I got um, a little uh, one inch PVC pipe, and I put that on the top, and then just pounded pounded on the top right there. And uh, that basically got this bearing right there in position. And I did the same thing with this. And then I used this handy dandy chair to kind of hold it um, intact while I did the pounding. So that work went, worked out very well. Well, this is the final stage of this uh, booster pump repair. Um, so, uh, I need to uh, get this uh, cover on for the electrical wires. Unfortunately, uh, the um, metal screws here broke off. So I'm going to have to maybe glue this on here or re-drill re some of those uh, screws out of there and put some holes in there and put some new screws in there. Um, over on this side, uh, one thing to note is uh, when you put this cover back on make sure the holes are up in the air um, because if you have this reversed you're going to have issues and I accidentally put it on backwards and was trying to figure out why things weren't working well um, over on this side um, I put in a new uh, uh, piece here with the uh, the metal ring and the spring and the washer there to uh, rejuvenate the uh, the pump and then we've got this piece over here I had to pop out the old insert in there it's a rubber with uh, uh, this is kind of like a, a a rock or whatever porcelain porcelain uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push that in where it's down there nice and tight and there's a little bit of a gap there um, but once you get it in there pretty pretty flush what you can do is you can screw it on to this shaft right here so we'll put it on there and we'll go let's see I believe this was clockwise okay so we're uh, spinning it on there and now as we spin that we can see this is spinning in the back so you could you can put a wrench back here and then just hand tighten this piece on there and then you should be good to go snug that up um, pretty good and then lastly here's here's this uh, uh, shell that goes on the front so um, when you put this on make sure that you put the uh, o-ring that goes around the outer piece here once you get on there then you can uh, kind of throw that on here let's see is that gonna go on I guess I gotta I gotta spin this tighter for that clamshell to go on but once you get that on here then you put your bolts back in here and your nuts nuts on the back and tighten it up and that should be good to go on that front um, it's the way the uh, the fins are right here this is on a, an older version pump I think it's uh, 2012 and earlier so that's that's the version that I had on my uh, installation and then on the back um, we've got your uh, on this case I'm running 220 volts to the uh, the two tabs there and then I'll put my cap back on here to uh, protect any um, dust to get in there so hopefully you found this uh, video useful and uh, lastly I did uh, just get a stainless steel allen bolt here and put it in here um, to uh, make it a little easier to get in there and drain the uh, the pool during the winter time I think there was a plastic piece on there originally but uh, I think the threads got bad or something so I got rid of it and just put a stainless steel on there